Hello everyone. This is Dr. Sultan Moinuddin Shokanan. I've completed my MD radio diagnosis from Seth GSMC and KM Hospital, Mumbai. I'm a gold medalist. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic. So without any delay, we'll be starting with the topic. Today's topic which we have selected is fetal 2D echocardiography. Now, this is one of the topic. Hearing its name, many people are even afraid. But we will make fetal 2D echo very simple. So, we'll take you through very basics and we'll start from A, B, C and we'll see the various views We'll also see the basic considerations, the introduction, etc. So let us begin. So this is the sequence in which we shall be discussing our lecture. So first we'll be having basic considerations. So in basic considerations, we'll see what are the indications, what thing is to be considered. We'll see in brief about the epidemiology. Then we'll see about the indications. Indications. Then we'll see what is the timing when the scan is to be usually done. Fetal orientation. Then visceroatrial arrangement. We call this a solitus. So we'll see how to tell whether the patient has situs, solitus or not. So we'll discuss in details. Then we'll see cardiac axis. Then we'll see the basic cardiac position. We'll also see what is the difference between axis and position. Finally, we will discuss various basic cardiac views. So let us start. I will not take you through boring statistics much, but just to emphasize that congenital heart disease is one of the major burden on our health system. And it is one of the important cause of mortality and morbidity in children. Almost the child mortality rate due to CHD, congenital heart defect, is 3 to 17%. And you can see the statistics which we have for BSD, PDA, ASD, ABSD, for various cardiac illnesses. Out of this, few are very common, like VSD, ASD, PDA. These are the diseases which are very common. This cardiac illness is common. AVSD, especially associated with Down syndrome. So, and few of them, they are really rare or few of them have specific association like Epstein's anomaly. It is associated with maternal lithium intake. So, similarly, Valproate, it is associated with neural tube defects and other anomalies. So, sim similarly, we have got a specific associations. Rubella associated with pulmonary stenosis, EGA. So, this is... Now, there are few associations which we need to know about. Now, there is a long list of cardiac pathologies. There is VSD, ventricular septal defect, PDA, which is patent ductus arteriosus, ASD, which is atrial septal defect, AVSD, atroventricular septal defect, pulmonary stenosis, aortic stenosis, coarctation of aorta, TOF, tetralogy of phallic, transposition of great vessels, then you've got uh, hypoplastic right heart syndrome, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, double outlet, right ventricle, single ventricle, DAPVC, total amorous pulmonary venous connection. Too complex. But let me tell you, to understand all of this, you need basic understanding of various views, basic anatomy. If basic things are done, you will be able to easily understand all of this. So, in today's session, we will be learning about basic views. We'll be seeing how to tell, how to start from basics to identify such complex cardiac illnesses. Now, first let us ask us a question. What are the risk factors for congenital heart disease? So, what is the indication? So, we divide indication under two broad headings. One is the fetal indication and second is the maternal indication. When it comes to fetal indication, the chromosomal abnormalities. Like I told you, Down syndrome, it is associated with AVSD. Extracardiac 
anatomical abnormalities. Whenever you see renal anomalies or genital anomalies or CNS anomalies, you need to also screen for heart diseases. Fetal cardiac arrhythmia, especially associated with maternal SLE, maternal SLE, anti-rho, anti-la, antibody positive, then they can cause a fetal congenital heart block. Similarly, any other cardiac anomaly on routine ultrasound. When you are suspecting cardiac anomaly on routine ultrasound, we'll see when you do suspect cardiac anomaly on routine ultrasound. Whenever NT is thickened, very important, thick NT is associated not just with aneuploidy, it's also associated with multiple congenital cardiac defects. In case of monochorionic twins, again, the chances of congenital heart diseases is high. Now, maternal indications. Family history of congenital illnesses, maternal diabetes, maternal diabetes or maternal PKU, phenylketonuria, maternal teratogenes, especially drugs like lithium, uh, retinoin derivatives, valproate, antiepileptics, phenytoin. So all these drugs are associated with uh, teratogenicity. We are well aware about this. And in such cases, we need to look about, look for congenital heart diseases. Pregnancy of, as, uh, pregnancy of assisted reproduction, ART. Then maternal obesity, very important. Maternal obesity, maternal diabetes, both are associated with the increased risk for congenital heart diseases. Uh, diabetes is specifically associated with multiple cardiac diseases, especially VSD in fetus. Now, intrauterine infection, one of the very important cause you should know, rubella. So when the mother is suffering from rubella, the chances of fetal congenital heart defects like PGA, like pulmonary stenosis increases. Now, what are the indications? Sometimes you might be doing a routine scan. Person might have come for routine growth scan. The female must have come for that. But you find certain indications where you should screen for cardiac anomaly. So what are those converting indicators? So number one, when you find that the chambers are asymmetrical, then the cardiac axis is altered. We shall discuss about chambers as well as cardiac axis in subsequent slides. When there is fetal arrhythmia, when there is fetal cardiac enlargement, when the cardiac position is altered, so asymmetry, altered axis, altered position, fetal arrhythmia or cardiac enlargement. So when you are looking at this, you should always screen for heart. And suppose you are looking, you are doing a routine growth scan and you see that there is renal anomaly or there is anomaly associated with AFI, oligo, poly or there is some limb defects. Also, you should screen for cardiac anomalies. Very important. All midline anomalies go hand in hand. So if you are having a CNS anomaly, if you are having a cleft lip, cleft palate, you should also look for cardiac anomaly, especially in cases of Patau syndrome. Okay. So these are all uh, the cases where you should look for them. When patient has a family history, strong family history of cardiac illnesses, uh, as congenital heart diseases, you should always screen for, you should always screen fetus for heart diseases, cardiac defects. Now, basic, which probe would you use? So, first thing is, whenever you are doing a fetal 2D echo, you will prefer a convex abdo probe. Convex abdo. Okay. And the protocol which you would be taking is the fetal 2D echo protocol, which is available in the machine. Now, sometimes, sometimes you might have doubt and you need some better resolution. If the fetus is small in size, in those cases, in early fetuses, where the fetus is small, you need some better resolution, you can also use linear probe. Okay. Now, again, for any probe, you should know that there is an indicator, which is an orientation marker on the probe. So this orientation marker will help you to decide which is the right hand side or which is the left hand side of the patient. So when you place the probe, suppose this is the marker, you place the probe over the abdomen. So the right of the patient should correspond with the right marker 
on your screen. That is very important. So there is an orientation marker on your screen and orientation marker on your probe and both of them should coincide. Which is the best timing to perform fetal to the echo? The best timing to perform is between 18 to 22 weeks. As after 22 weeks, after 30 weeks, you find the rib shadowing. This rib shadowing makes it very difficult to take various views. And uh, we are not very sure. Sometimes it might create difficulty in seeing small VSDs or small cardiac defects. Will not be pretty sure about that. Orientation. Now, basics. So, for a pregnant female, there's a fetus inside, and when you are doing a 2D echo, you should imagine yourself as the fetus. Imagine yourself as the fetus. So, imagine that you are lying there. And that is the best way how you would be able to tell the orientation, especially the solitus of the child, of the fetus. So you should imagine yourself. Now, two important views which we usually use. Now, this is this is the fetus. Suppose it's a fetus. So you can take these cuts. These are axial cuts. So these are transverse section or the axial section. And if I take section along this. So you will get such sections. These are sagittal section. So you can either take sagittal section or even required you will be able to, you will be taking transfer section of the fetal thorax. This is fetal thorax. Now, now you got this. So basically first you need to orient yourself. There is fetus. Look at cardiac activity. Cardiac activity is present. Then you see what is the presentation, whether it is cephalic, or whether it is breach. And imagine yourself to be the fetus. So suppose, so suppose you are this fetus. So this is breach presentation. So your head will be in the region of uterine fundus. In this case, imagine yourself as this fetus. So this side becomes your right side and this side becomes your left side. So your cardiac apex should be towards the left side. Okay. So you have to take two sections. One is at the level of thorax and one is at the level of abdomen. So in thorax, you need to look at the cardiac apex. The cardiac apex should be towards the left side. So that will help you to tell whether this is situs solitus or not. We'll be discussing in details, but this is number one. Suppose the fetus is like this. Suppose the fetus is like this. In this case, imagine yourself in this place. So the head is down. Head is down. So you imagine yourself. The left side comes here, the right side comes here. So now the apex should be towards this side. The cardiac apex should belong to this side. Okay. Similarly, you can do it for this and this positions also. So best is again look at fetus, look at presentation, whether it is cephalic or it is breech. Imagine yourself being the fetus. Look where is the spine. Look where is the spine. And depending upon that, see which side is the right and which side is the left. And you will be able to easily tell that which is the right side of the fetus and which is the left side of the fetus. Then you have to take two sections, one at thorax, one at abdomen. In thorax, look where is the apex of the heart facing towards. If apex of the heart is facing towards left, this is correct. This is situs solitus. At the same time, in abdomen, we are supposed to look at few organs. So liver should be on the right side. Stomach bubble should be on the left side. Aorta should be on the left side. IVC should be on the right side. So liver IVC right. Stomach bubble in out on the left. So that will again help you out to uh, tell whether the site is this is there or not. Let us move ahead. So this is how the image is. Now look at this. Uh, so look at this image. 
This is how we divide it from the midline. This is spine. This is the spine. Okay. Now look, this is liver. The entire is the liver. Okay. This is gallbladder. This is on the right side. So liver with GB on the right side. This is IVC. So IVC is again on the right side. Very important. So liver, gallbladder, IVC lies on the right side. And look here, the stomach, spleen and the stomach bubble, they are on the left side and the aorta here. The aorta lie on the left side. The spleen, stomach bubble, aorta. These three lie on the left side. Now we'll be seeing in the ultrasound image. So this image shown here is the ultrasound image and this is the axial section of the abdomen. This entire is the abdomen. This is the abdomen. Okay. Now within the abdomen, look carefully. This is the liver. This is the liver. This is the liver. And you can see this is umbilical vein. This is the portal sinus system. This is IVC in the retrohepatic segment. Okay. This is the retrohepatic portion of IVC. So IVC lies on the right side. So this is the right side of the fetus. And on right side, you are able to see the liver, IVC, very important. Now on left side of the patient, the fetus, you are able to see stomach bubble. This is stomach bubble. And our so stomach bubble and aorta along with spleen, you are able to see it on the left side. Okay, so this is on the left side. So this helps you to tell which side of the fetus. So this helps you to determine which is the site, uh, whether it is situs solitus or not. Situs solitus means what should belong to right is belonging to right, and what should belong to left is belonging to left. So liver should belong to right side. So liver, if it is on the right side. Spleen is on the left side, stomach is on the left side, Guess and the cardiac apex is towards the left side. It means this is situs solidus. IVC is on the right side, aorta is on the left side. Now, very important, more than stomach bubble and liver, it is aorta and IVC which are more specific for isomerism. So, if IVC is on the right side and they use find that the uh, so that is that IVC is on the right side and aorta is on the left side and you find the cardiac apex is on the left side there is situs solidus. Okay. So we move ahead. So now this uh, again I am showing you this important view here. Uh, now this is the section of thorax. This is the section of thorax. So this is axial scan of the thorax of fetus. And you are able to see here, you are able to see here few views. You are able to see four chambers. And out of these four chambers, we are, this is your heart. This is the fetal heart. Fetal heart. And now we are able to see this, this both are lungs. This is the lung on one side, that is the left side. And this is the lung on the right side. We are able to see these are ribs. These are the ribs. Okay. Now look here. These are chambers. So this is the left ventricle, which forms apex of the heart. This forms apex of the heart. Now look here, this is another chamber. This forms the, this is the right ventricle. Now look this one, which lies behind. It is the posterior most chamber, very important. This is the posterior most chamber very close to our tongue. This is our tongue. And now look here, this is the 
right deck. Two atria are separated together by interatrial septum. This is interatrial septum. Two ventricles are separated together by this septa in between. This is called interventricular septa. Okay. Now, so this is the view which you get. And this is the axial view of thorax. Okay. So now we move ahead. Now I move ahead. So any uh, any of the fetal position, you are going to take the two sections, one at the section of thorax and one at the section of the abdomen. And then you are going to see. So if this is the right side of fetus and this is the left side of the fetus, apex pointing to the left, stomach bubble and out on the left. This is situs solidus. Similarly, here, apex is pointing to the left, gastric bubble on the left, situs solidus. Apex is on the left. Here again, IVC is on the right. So, this is situs solidus. Apex is on the left, liver IVC on the right, gastric bubble out on the left, situs solidus. So, you have to imagine yourself being fetus and then find out which is right, which is left, and then see. The, at the sections of chest and at the section of abdomen, the location of liver, aorta, IVC, stomach, and then decide whether it is situs solidus or not. Okay, let us move ahead. Okay, so again, this is the anatomy part. You can see this is the axial section of the abdomen. You can clearly see this is the stomach. This is IVC, this entire portion is the liver. This is our. This is the spleen. So, if the apex is pointing this words, that is towards the left, then this will be situs solidus. Now, look at this. We will have an exercise now. So, I'll take a highlight. So now, in this fetus, look. This is a bridge fetus. The head is towards the fundus. The bridge is the presenting part. Okay. So now here, this is a bridge fetus. So imagine yourself lying in the uterine gap. So head is here. Now the spine is to the maternal left. Imagine yourself, the spine being to the maternal left. Yeah. So now when you imagine yourself, you find out that left side comes up and the right side goes down. So the side which is above will be the left. The side which is below will become your right. Okay. So now look here. So now we'll see this. The side which is above this side. This is above, right? This is superior. So over here, this is the left side. So see, the apex is towards the left side. The apex is towards the left side. Okay. If the apex is towards the left side, it means that this is, again you will have to see one section at the abdomen. So one section at the abdomen, you see stomach is on the left side, aorta is on the left side, liver with gallbladder is on the right side. That means that this is situs solidus. Okay, situs solidus. So this is how you have to find out the situs. So the first thing you are going to do, confirm pregnancy. Look for cardiac activity, look the presentation, then cut, find out the situs solitus of the fetus, whether it is situs solitus or not. What is situs solitus? Again, we'll revise in one slide. So, on the right side, you will find the morphological right atrium, the major hepatic lobe, IVC, the trilobed lung, and you will find the short. Short e arterial bronchus. On the left, you will find morphological left atrium, the stomach, the descending aorta, the bilobed lung, and the long hyperarterial bronchus. Now I move ahead. What is situs inversus? So situs inversus is when you have morphological left atrium on the right side, stomach on the right side, 
descending aorta and bilobed lung on the right side. What is morphocytes? And on the left side, you've got morphological right atrium, the major hepatic lobe, IVC, and trilobe lung. So if you have this, that becomes situs inversus. So a reverse of what you had in situs solidus. Now, sometimes you cannot determine the situs. Sometimes there will be mixture of things. That is called situs ambiguous. So when it is situs ambiguous, you won't be able to decide whether it is situs solitus or situs inversus. Apex is towards this side, the liver is towards this side. So you cannot decide sometimes. It is situs ambiguous. So now, just to show you, let us see. Uh, image. Yeah. So this is, we are seeing the four chamber view of the heart. Now, we are able to see the four chamber view of the heart. Now look here, I'll take a pen. Now, this is the thorax of fetus, axial section of thorax of fetus. You can see this is the spine. This is aorta. And you can see this is the heart. This is the heart. Okay. And look at this. This is the interventricular septum. Okay. The heart is towards this side. The apex is formed by this ventricle. So this is your left ventricle. This is your morphological left ventricle. Similarly, this is morphological right ventricle. One more important finding to note, I'll show you. One more important finding to notice. Can you see this band? This band. It is the band which goes from the lateral wall, attaches itself to the interventricular septum. This is called moderator band. Wherever you have moderator band in the ventricle, that ventricle is the right ventricle. Need to remember that. Okay. Now, let us see. Yeah. So, you are able to see this, uh, the septum in between the axis of the heart, which is very nicely seen here. You are able to see the four chambers. So this is your right ventricle. This is your right atrium. This is your left ventricle. This is your left atrium. Okay. So now first we'll be discussing the cardiac axis. So the angle that the interventricular septum makes with the midline. So this is midline, this is axis of the heart. Angle which is made in between, this is 45 degree angle. So that corresponds to the axis of the heart. Now normally, when you speak about axis of the heart, it is 45 plus minus 20. So the normal range would be between 25 to 65. Anything which is less than 25 or anything which is above 45, that is abnormal. So now look here again. This is the illustration. You are able to see this 45 degrees the axis. Here again, this is the thorax or the fetus. You are able to see this is the fetal heart. And you are able to see this is the midline. This is along the septum of the heart. If you see this angle, this angle will give you axis of the middle part. I move ahead. So sometimes you find, now look here, this is the normal axis, but here you see this axis has been deviated. So that can be deviation of the cardiac axis. And whenever you find that cardiac axis is deviated, you need to look for specific pathologies. Now look here. In this case, the cardiac axis is deviated. It was a case of tetralogy of phalanx. Now look here again. In this case, there is a cystic mass here, which is looking like a cystic mass, but actually not a cystic mass. It is basically a enlarged right atrium. So I'll show you. Look here. This entire is the heart. 
this entire is the heart. Okay, and you see this one. This is the left ventricle. This is the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle. So this wall over here on the right side, this is tricuspid wall. And this wall is the mitral wall. Now look at this carefully. Very interesting. This entire chamber. This entire chamber is the right atrium. Is the right atrium. So this entire chamber is the right atrium. So it means the right atrium is enlarged. Okay, and there is atrialization of the ventricle. It means this is a case of Epstein's anomaly. This is a case of Epstein's anomaly. So in Epstein's anomaly, you can have deviation of the axis of heart. But let us not go into that details now. What I want to focus is that if a chamber of heart is enlarged or if there is some anomaly, the axis will deviate. So deviation of the axis should enlighten us. Okay, now you should look for some pathology. And this is not normal. Okay. So we'll move ahead now. Now, cardiac position. First, we have seen is the axis. Now we see is the position of the heart. Now, position of the heart within the chest is where the heart is located within the chest. Now, it doesn't depend on axis. For example, the heart, it can be, the axis may be towards the left. But suppose there is a mass here which pushes it, which pushes it to this side. So the position of the heart changes, but axis remains the same. So axis and position, these two are different things. So depending upon position, heart can be dextro, dextrocardia located on the right side. It can be levocardia located on the left side. And it can be mesocardia, that is central in position. Now look here. Here you can see that there is a message, there is a pleural effusion in the left side and the mediastinum is shifted. Although you see the axis of the heart is towards the left, axis of the heart is towards the left, but the heart itself has shifted to the right. So this is the extra position of the heart, extra position of the heart. Now, levo position of the heart. Levo position is when the heart is on the left side. So here you can see that uh, because of a big mass, that is congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation, CPAM, the heart has shifted on the opposite side. So that comes the levo position if it shifts on the left side. Now, mesocardia. Sometimes it might happen. You look at this heart. It is compressed in between. And the heart comes in center. Like this thing occurs in case of laryngeal arteries. And then you find the heart is exactly in the center. It is compressed. This is mesocard. Now, here, look at this case. This is interesting. Now, in this case, you have the heart, the axis of the heart. The axis of the heart itself, ideally it should be on this side. The axis of the heart is now on the right side. This is left, this is right. So axis of the heart is towards the right side. So when axis itself is on the right side, this becomes dextroversion. So normal heart is levovertic, but if the axis is towards the right side, it becomes dextroversion. So point to be noted, dextroversion is different from dextroposition. Levoversion is different from levoposition. Okay. So first we have determined the situs, then we have determined the axis, then we have determined the position. Now, the third important thing which you know, which you know to note, is the cardiac size. 
Now, uh, this is the heart again at the level of thorax. Okay. Now, this is the heart and this is the axial section of thorax. So, you can see these are four chambers, the four chamber view. This is aorta, this is the left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium. You have to take circumference of the heart and divide it by circumference of the thorax. Now, thoracic circumference is taken outside the thoracic cage. So, it should include the entire thoracic cage from outer to outer of the thoracic cage. And then you have to divide. This is called C by T ratio. Now, C by T ratio should not be more than 5, more than 0.5. Okay, so basically, a heart should be less than 50% of the thorax. This is what you must remember. Now, at the same time, I'll tell you important causes of cardiomegaly. So, whenever you see that there is cardiomegaly, you should suspect a list of diseases in heart. And these are those congenital malformations which you need to suspect. So, there are certain cardiac conditions which can lead to cardiomegaly. Just now we saw an image, Epstein's anomaly. Severe enlargement of the right atrium. Atrialization of the right ventricle. Tricuspid wall is below. Then tricuspid wall dysplasia. AV septal defect. Sustained fetal arrhythmia like heart block. Dilated cardiomyopathies. Premature constriction of the ductus arteriosus. Extra cardiac causes of cardiomegaly. When there is AV malformation. So there is a shunting between artery and vein. Whenever there is shunt between artery and vein, the heart has to pump more. So in case of sacrococcal teratoma, vein of gallon malformation, placental choreangioma, in those cases. The recipient twin in twin to twin uh, transfusion syndrome. Severe fetal anemia, uncontrolled maternal diabetes, malipus. So, these are the common causes of fetal cardiomegaly. Now, let us summarize what we have seen in this session. So, first, we have tried to view the cardiac situs. So, once we found out the situs, second important thing which we did was to find out the cardiac axis. Normal axis ranges between 25 to 65 degrees. Third thing which we need to see is the cardiac position, okay, and find out whether the heart is normally positioned or not. And then finally we saw about cardiac size, taking C by T ratio, which should be less than 0.5. Anything which increases the cardiac size, we should suspect some cardiac or extra cardiac pathology. Okay. So, now in part 2, we shall be discussing various views of echocardio, fetal echocardiography. Thank you.